We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And on today's episode, to join me in the G-spot, that is guest spotlight, we have the amazing, the beautiful, the wonderful, phenomenal Brie Jenkins. Everybody, round of applause. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> Brie is the founder and CEO of The Gathered Life, a counseling and coaching brand based in Los Angeles. And Brie is dating coach and licensed marriage and family therapist. I have had her on the show to talk about how to um, step outside of your boundaries and interracial relationships. Um, she is a beautiful married woman who, uh, like I said, I brought on the show before, but today's episode, Brie is joining us to talk about how to tell if you are caught in the narcissist web. And I'm so happy to have you on the episode, Brie. This is going to be, I already know, pretty hot and tempting. So i um, super excited. You've already answered my question before when I warm you guys up in the guest spotlight of like when did you first fall in love with yourself mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. because you already answered that we're going to give them something different and you're going to tell mm -hmm. us for the c in communication in spicy you're going to tell us what's the best compliment you've ever received that's how we're warming you up on today's mm. episode go ahead be braggadocious oh the best compliment that i've ever received um i was at a nas concert and he stopped the concert to say, I just have to say her right there Ooh. you in a dress. You are so sexy. I will tell that story until I'm old in a, <laughs> in a nursing home. I'm going to be like, girl, back in the summer, a hot girl <laughs> summer of 2000. <laughs> that was the best nice, compliment I ever received. Nice compliment. Yes, I was there. dancing oh to gosh. Uchi Wally. <laughs> what? You must have been yes. serving it looking back at it if Nasir over here stopped. Look, I've never taken a belly dancing <laughs> class, but I gave him everything I could and he caught it. I love that. Now that's a real compliment too, because that talks about sex appeal, your feminine mm -hmm. energy, just thriving, flying all over the place. I love it. Okay, that's a great one. So, okay, we got you warmed up now. Now we get to talk about narcissists. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we're so, going in deep. We're going to just go deep. We're just going to go there because this is a term that I hear oftentimes and a lot of women will come at me, I'm sure even in your practice and say, um, I always attract narcissists. I'm always with a narcissist. And it's a buzzword right now that I don't think that people have a clear understanding when they're labeling people narcissists. And so I wanted to bring attention to this so that we can actually talk about the condition and what narcissism syndrome looks looks like versus us just using this word loosely. I want us to take it seriously. Yes. And so people really understand and are clear and also know if they're a narcissist or if they're in a relationship with one. So can you start by giving a little bit of background on what a narcissist is? Yeah, so I too agree that it is a uh, oversaturated word that mm -hmm. people are just kind of tossing around. It's definitely a buzzword. And I think what people are trying to describe is that they're dating someone who is selfish or someone who uh, doesn't consider them very much. But that's not quite the same thing as a narcissist. A narcissist is a person who typically has something like a narcissistic personality disorder, which is a pretty uh, high intensity version of selfishness, of self-centeredness, of lacking empathy or emotional awareness or caring about mm -hmm. how other people feel. Um, you know, they're usually pretty grandiose or, or, or very think they're important, um, high ego, but <laughs> the other side of the high ego is a fragile ego. So mm -hmm. some people are confident, right? Which is a centered ego. Some people are, are, are very braggadocious in their egoness, but then they can't take any criticism. They're overly sensitive to criticism. They're very defensive. Um, they do not like to take accountability. Mm. It's always this person, that person, these instances, when it comes to me, I'm not a bad person. When it comes to you, you're a bad person. Mm, so they're gaslighting so, um, the hell out of you. <laughs> oh, yes. Honey, if you think, if you think that just, you know, gaslighting is another word that gets yeah, that's oversaturated too. We, oh girl. my goodness. Everybody's not <laughs> gaslighting you. <laughs> Everybody you might actually be tripping. Not, <laughs> yes, you might actually be tripping. And sometimes people don't validate your feelings not because they um, are trying to make you believe that something's wrong with you. They don't validate your feelings because they don't agree with them. Right. That's not quite the same thing as the manipulativeness 
that comes from being with a narcissist who is gaslighting you in order to control you and manipulate you to behave in a certain way. You know, narcissists mm -hmm. exercise power over people. They don't co-share power. They mm -hmm. exercise power over people. And so, um, you know, I think it's a much more extreme word and, you know, people shouldn't toss it around so much. Of course, everyone has little slivers of different types of personality disorders because it is based in personality. Yeah. So just because you have an ego doesn't mean you're a narcissist. Right. Um, you could just be a person as an ego. Or it's a combination. <laughs> you may be yeah, an arrogant, cocky person. Yeah. Yes. You may be an arrogant or cocky person. Um, and, but you have empathy and you love people and you, um, treat them well, you don't abuse them, you don't gaslight them, you know, there are, are, there can be symptoms of something without it being the full diagnosis. So I usually tell people like, pump the brakes on labeling everybody, yes. you know, with a term and kind of to understand that just because a person is selfish towards you, it doesn't mean that they're narcissists. Um, sometimes, honestly, there's no intimacy in the relationship as to why somebody should really deeply care about your feelings. Mm. And so what you're getting is the level of intimacy for the relationship. You know, women will say like, he didn't even care that blah, 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 blah. And it's like, but you guys aren't anything yet. <laughs> he's not attached for to a you. Week. <laughs> he's just yeah, not that so, into you, girl. <laughs> yeah, he's just not that into you. So that is not a narcissist. That's just called you know, living um, under the boundaries of the status of your actual relationship. So um, yeah, I think when people are thinking about these terms, they really need to be looking at more extreme versions before they kind of toss that out there. Why do you think that um, it's become such a popular word that we're using, not understanding that we're we're diagnosing someone with a disorder that isn't professionally diagnosed? Why are we just yeah. now <laughs> accusing everyone of being a narcissist? Oh, uh you know, I think that um, there's just a proliferation, honestly, of character uh, summarization of people. Mm -hmm. I think pop psychology has a lot to do with it. People are fascinated by psychology. And it's actually for the same reason as narcissists. People like to learn about themselves. Yeah. Right. And so people are fascinated by psychology. People learn these things and they're like, I have a whole degree now. <laughs> Go out here and like psychoanalyze everyone and, and try to box people into these narrow definitions because the human nature is, is that we want to understand things. I think a lot of people unfortunately have had toxic, that's another word that's overused, but a lot of people have had unhealthy relationships, right? Sometimes it's unhealthy because people are young, they're not fully evolved, they have yep. spiritual and personality deficits, right, that they haven't worked on. It doesn't mean the root of a person is a toxic person or that mm -hmm. the person is, you know, discarded and should, should never ever be with another person again. But I think people are grappling to try to explain some of mm -hmm. their, you know, some of their experiences, they want to understand some of the things that were hard for them. Exactly. They want to understand. And I think it's really easy to label people and to judge people and close the book on them as a neat chapter of this is a bad person mm -hmm. and I'm a good person. Right. You know, and the truth is, is that humans are just more complicated than that. And uh, everybody comes from a point. There certainly are narcissists. There certainly are people that are toxic, but you know, but the degree to which I'm hearing them be used is kind of like, I think it's, I think it's a little bit too much. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely oversaturated in, in pop culture. <laughs> like you said, it's the culture, I think right now and toxic culture even is gained a lot of popularity and how we talk about relationships and what we're even allowing or approving. And a lot of the behaviors, you know, be it negative, even what's going on in the culture and how we handle relationships is being celebrated or accepted. And we don't want to hold ourselves accountable. So it's easier to put the blame on our partner or the person who we're involved in as like, well, this is, it's them. That's why it didn't work out. They're toxic. They're the narcissist. They gaslight me. I'm using the buzzwords now. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, it's hard to get around. Yeah, it's, it's like easier to do that than to say, like, to flash the, you know, the light on ourselves and say, okay, how did I contribute to this situation? What is it about me that wants them? And so when we talk about narcissism, is this something that you're born with? Is this something that you um, are created, are narcissists created or are they born, right? Is it nature versus nurture? What is it when it comes to this disorder? How, did, how does someone, did you, do you birth narcissism? Like, how does it happen? So uh, typically the answer in, in psychology, and I think when you actually work with people is that it is never one or the other, it's always a combination of both, right? So nature 
uh, nature is the gun and nurture is the trigger, Mm. right? So um, we have something inside of us that may make us more prone to be the type of person who has, uh, if you're a bold person, if you're, you know, more of an extrovert, if you're very charming, those are all sometimes qualities that narcissists have. But then there are people that are very charming who are also very kind. Mm. You know, the lack of the empathy, a lot of times that can come from trauma, it can come from socialization. There are a lot of institutions and and, uh, social norms and culture that can groom people into being more narcissistic as a whole our society mm-hmm. is actually more narcissistic we're not a <laughs> what society. of course yes let's talk about yeah. social media that only adds to any narcissism that we may be slightly experiencing like it only expands it even more right because we become more self-centered Absolutely. especially our generation the more that we see like beauty being celebrated like never before like what you have what you own what you do being being celebrated, being able to create brands and being able to create uh, alleged lifestyles and this imagery that we put out there, it becomes almost a sub- obsessive culture and obsession with self even. So a lot of it we're feeding into. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We're all pumping into the machine. All of us, like everybody is guilty of it, myself included. Right. And so as a whole society, we are more me centric. Yeah. Right. Um, And I think for some people, if they don't have grounding factors, if they have already a natural disposition to be less in tune with nurturing and empathy and um, caring and consideration of others, I think you have the perfect breeding ground to develop a full-blown narcissist. Narcissists typically start out as young children displaying signs that a lot of kids display, right? Mm -hmm. Not taking accountability for something that you did. Yeah, I didn't break it my imaginary friend broke it. (laughs) No, you broke it. And as the mom, you have to like teach them like, no, you broke it and you need to say sorry and you need to own up for it. And like, you have to train kids through that emotional process. But if no one ever does that, and then you combine it with a, you know, sometimes uh, certain cultures breed toxicity, like certain workplaces Mm -hmm. or industries, right? And that just keeps going unchecked. Yeah, It turns into just this really hard, firm, inflexible um, set of behaviors. And ultimately that's what a personality disorder is. It's a set of inflexible behaviors. If you can adapt and flow and like turn it off when it's good for you, um, maybe you're not full-blown personality disorder yet, (laughs) but, uh, but for most narcissists, they can't turn it off and flow. They can do it for like social, but not intimate romantic, right? They can do it Um, compartmentalizing in different areas of their lives but ultimately that same set of behaviors is always going to play out the same way in the person-to-person dynamic what about parents what role do parents play in narcissism if they are a narcissistic parent aren't you likely to allow those qualities based on like environment right so we talk about genetics and then we also talk about environment as well like doesn't that role play um, a huge part of a child growing up to then be a narcissist if they're not maybe held accountable as a child or, you know, given responsibilities and made to actually like think and process these things and even their emotions, <laughs> they grow mm-hmm. up to be a full-blown adult and now they're this, you know, narcissist. Yeah, I mean, you certainly can breed another narcissist. Um, ironically, a lot of times when the parent is a narcissist, it will breed a codependent child mm. um, as opposed to because the narcissist wants to maintain power. Mm-hmm. So typically they will abuse their child mm. emotionally, right? So it's hard for a person who is emotionally kind of in the victim role to gain the necessary type of power identity Mm. to become the perpetrating narcissist. It is fully possible. Don't get me wrong, it (laughs) does happen. Um, But a lot of times, um, indulgent parents will breed narcissists. Parents who don't give any emotional boundaries, emotional regulation, never make their children take accountability Uh, like the whole scandal where people were like paying for their kids to get into institutions Mm -hmm. and things like that. That's a form of allowing people to not take accountability and um, basically kind of spoiling a child, which could be a breeding ground for the type of lack of empathy and awareness that, you know, narcissists typically have. 
What about though these um and it's it's tend to found more in men than women but they both mm-hmm. narcissism exists for both both suffer from the disorder what about though when we see you know this adult man or woman who's a narcissist now and maybe they are fulfilling voids in their relationship or they're stepping out often time and then they don't take accountability and they want to blame you know their partner for things that maybe like their partner did that pushed them to cheat or things that, you know, weren't happening right in the relationship that they probably didn't fully communicate. And then they step out. Like, is that something that you might see oftentimes being in a relationship with a narcissist? Absolutely. The lack of accountability and the, I don't have a technical name for it, but I call it the one, two switcheroo, right? (laughs) So when you're talking to someone and you're like, well, I just, I want to talk with you about this thing. Like, I didn't like it when you said this to me and they're like, well, the other day, blah, 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 blah. And actually I have a problem with this. So it's like two seconds of you talking Mm -hmm. and then switch. No, they can't sit with taking the accountability, being the person who maybe has done something wrong, it turns into this big ego wound that is just completely unnecessary. It could be the mildest criticism, but they're so defensive to that. Mm. Um, And then they shift the focus and then they, they, they tend to not have the type of communication and collaborative style where they can let your needs be met and then Mm. maybe bring up their needs. It has to be win or lose victim and villain, Mm. winner and loser. It's very extreme in terms of not being able to be reasonable with the person and say, you know what? My bad, period. (laughs) You know what? I'm sorry. I apologize. (laughs) I will do better, right? And are they willing to learn? Like if you're in a relationship with someone who is a narcissist um, or maybe has narcissistic tendencies, are they willing to learn though, right? So like when we do try to hold them accountable or we do um, say like, hey, this hurt me, what I really need from you is X, Y, and Z. I need you in this moment to stop, to process and respond in this way of support or comfort versus instantly defending yourself and rebuttaling in a way that hurts my feelings. Like if we're on the, if we're the sender, you know, sending that message and they're the receiver, are they capable of processing the information that we're sharing and saying, hmm, and compute and say, you know what, you're right. In this moment, I should handle this better. Like, is there any way of guiding or teaching a narcissist how to be less of a narcissist? So the general guidelines for narcissistic abuse is to not tolerate abuse and to be out, which is my typical kind of advice if I'm working one-to-one with a client. However, um, what you also described in that exchange, I think is part of the reason why narcissism is tossed around too much, because what you're describing also is just classic defensiveness, Mm -hmm. which is anybody can have defensiveness and they don't have to be a narcissist. And a common common reaction of being defensive is to alter, alternate what the subject is about. Yeah. So to me, the difference that I look for is if I'm working with a person who's just being defensive um, and I call out that defensiveness and I ask them to listen to me or I say, you know, I, I understand that you want to talk about that right now, but this is really hurting me. Yeah. And I, you know, as my partner or as my friend, it's important to me that you, that you care about what's hurting me. Mm-hmm. A person who's just defensive will most likely respond to your pain. Mm. And shifts like, okay, well, I'm not trying to hurt you. It's just, I'm frustrated. You know, they, they, they may have more of the empathy yeah. inside of them to try and work through it and try and correct things. The narcissist, see when you're soft and you're vulnerable and you try to be intimate and you uh, reach out to them emotionally, the narcissist does not care about, <laughs> they don't care about them tears, <laughs> you know? They're like, no, you're the one who trying to, you attacking me, you know, like they, those tears do not mean anything. That request to care about my feelings doesn't mean anything. They're just going to keep pushing. There's no way to kind of get over that defensive triggering hump. And so that's kind of what I look for when I'm thinking about, is this person truly inflexible? Yeah. And, you know, you can see this in key people in our society, right? <laughs> A lot you know, of people like from politicians <laughs> to celebrities and stuff. And like, you know, I think a lot of people have gotten a, a picture of what a really, really fixed narcissist looks like. It's yeah. like, please stop expecting this person 
to uh, be mature and mm-hmm. to be responsible. They are not. They have the emotional constitution of a toddler yep. and they are going to behave that way. And once you release the expectation of <laughs> thinking that the narcissist <laughs> is going to behave in any other way, it becomes a lot easier. Well, it's challenging, right? Because I'm probably guilty of it. A lot of people are probably guilty of it, maybe having fallen in love or maybe are in a relationship right now with the narcissist. And when you are emotionally attached, it's so hard to get out because you are in this web, like we said, Mm -hmm. you know, when you're tangled up and you're like, gosh, but the emotional power that they have over me, like it's, it's hard to leave. So it sounds like, you know, some, oftentimes a partner is not enough to, you know, correct for this disorder. What hope is there then for a narcissist Or, you know, if, if I am in the relationship with someone that is a narcissist, what hope do I have of them? How do they get help then? Because if they can't self cure, I can't cure them. What should a narcissist do? Because oftentimes part of the problem is narcissists don't think that there's a problem with them. So they don't Mm -hmm. really seek the help that's necessary. Yeah. Like going to a therapist or going, (laughs) getting, they wouldn't sign up for our services because they're like, nothing's wrong with me. I'm the best. Um, that so what is exactly is, what, what it is. is. What is the narcissist to do? And someone who was in love with a narcissist. So yeah, usually what I tell people is like, you know, if you're the narcissist, um, you don't need to worry about what they're going to do after the relationship with you. They're going to find a new person. Mm. Oh, they're going to find a new person. Mm. <laughs> you know? Say that one um, again for the church in the back. <laughs> find a new person. Um, and you do not need to delude yourself into thinking that that person they got the emotionally healthy version of that person and they're treating her or him so much better. And they've done all this emotional work and the Instagram story is, you know, they got the upgrade. No, they didn't. People only change in in a couple of manners of ways. And that is calamity, something terrible happening that breaks you down. So it breaks down all that ego so that you have to transform Mm -hmm. or thoughtful, slow, uh, spiritual or emotional work. Um, Yeah. And spiritual transformation. Those are like the ways that people change, right. And time, obviously, because age is a factor, you know, lots of age time. If it didn't happen that way, if it's two months later and they're smiling on Instagram, that ain't it, boo. (laughs) (laughs) Cause they did not change. They will come. They will. You, you you may may try to leave them. Maybe you're strong enough and you try to walk away Mm -hmm. and then they lure you back in because there's all control that they have and they want to exercise it. Maybe they're sending you gifts. Maybe they're popping up on you on your doorstep. Maybe they're, you know, texting and going off on you, but then later on, they're like apologizing, showing you love. It almost, I mean, it is an abusive relationship in a way because of, you know, the character defamation that they put on you of like you horrible person and not seeing how amazing they are. So it's very, let me tell you, the narcissists are great at making people feel guilty and manipulating people, you know, and a narcissist never wants to be abandoned, Mm -hmm. but they will discard you. Mm. And it is a distinct difference, right? Between ending a relationship in love and separating from somebody and being discarded in which the narcissist basically makes you feel like, you know, you have no value. Mm. Um, This word, it's another word that people use too much trash, Mm. right? We all are guilty of it, but the context of calling a, a human yeah. trash really is quite unempathetic and narcissistic. Yeah. We're essentially saying your value is to be discarded in a dirty landmine. Yep. <laughs> you know, dumped. <laughs> dumped. Like it's it's a dump. So um, you know narcissists tend to discard people. They don't break up with people. You've been discarded, you know, and they put you in a nice little cycle. And the Mm. reason why you get hooked in is because, you know, usually you start out in the idolization phase, yeah, right? Where they make you feel special. Maybe they love bomb you, telling you all the sweet things, super romantic gestures. I mean, making you feel like Queen Nefertiti. Oh, yeah. uh, and Cleopatra combined. Oh yeah, they're telling you, "I want you to be my wife. You're the one. You are everything. You are a goddess." Yeah, they're start. They're laying it on thick. Mm-hmm. Laying it on thick. Um, and as soon as you're kind of emotionally hooked, then it starts to creep out all of the little things. And then when you don't accept, when you try to exert a healthy boundary, when you don't accept, mm-hmm. hey, it's not okay for you to talk to me this way. That is when the narcissist say, "Now wait a minute. You know, well, actually." you're not together. Actually, your little egg is not that good. <laughs> you know, they start 
they start coming for you and you're like, wait, where did this person They'll throw from? everything out. They'll call, they'll say you got daddy issues. They'll start going yes. for regulars, private, intimate details that you've told them, insecurities that you have shared. They will start yes. pulling those and tossing those at you. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden now you're on the defense and you're second guessing yourself and feeling insecure. Yes. And you're like, well, maybe dang, is, maybe it really is me. Like maybe there is something you know wrong with me for trying to hold you accountable. Maybe I'm the reason that this fight is happening. And you start to second guess yourself. Yeah, like it kind exactly. of that. And it is this, well, dang, I don't like when we're fighting. I hate this feeling. So let me just push through and make up with this person because I want to get back to that good feeling they originally made me feel. Mm-hmm. Yes. It, and I try to keep you it's a it's the carrot in front of the horse. You know, and I usually tell people if the first three months of your relationship was the magic written in the stars, and then everything after that is you texting, analyzing, crying in the bathroom, reading blogs, calling all your friends, telling them what he did, or worse, being afraid to tell people what they did. That part. Inherently know that it is shameful and that it is abusive. Then you are with a person that is unhealthy in that relationship. Even though that first part was great, that was not the reality, that was the mask. You know, and now they've taken it off and you see the real version. I think what happens to people is that they keep thinking, I'll get back to the real person, which oh, yeah. is the original. And no, the real person is the one that you have the whole time. Right. And they they are disillusioned that to think that yeah. that beginning part of the relationship was the actual relationship. They mm-hmm. honestly think that like those bubblegum and raindrops moments, you know, the horse and carriage and all that, that that mm-hmm. was what they, that's what they're hoping for. That's what they're wishing and praying and shooting on a star for. Mm-hmm. And they'll do anything to get back to that. But unfortunately- that consi- that that consistency is done. <laughs> like that three months that he got you or she got you. Like we have to face reality. And there's you know yes. the dream version, the illusion, and then there's re- the reality. And I think you hit it so good on the money because uh, you said you're afraid to tell people. Like you're afraid to tell your friends, right? Mm-hmm. I am huge on when it comes to what you share with your friends. It's either if you are in a healthy relationship, right? I strongly believe in like protecting your mate. Maybe you don't put all your business out there and you pick and choose like, maybe you don't need to complain, you know, to your mom every single time he gets on your nerves or she gets on your nerves or whatever. We protect our Mm -hmm. partnership when you're in a healthy relationship because not all of your business is everybody's business. But when you are in an unhealthy relationship and there is abusive tendencies or the person is continuously putting you down or hurting you, and now you have decided, well, I'm not going to share this information. And you lie to yourself and say, well, I'm protecting our relationship versus no, you know that the people who care about you and love you are going to say, this is not love. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to share because you don't want their opinion or their judgment, which is in conflict with you wanting to stay. Yes. So yes. I love that and you hit on that. hold you accountable mm-hmm. to you. Now you feel pressured to have to do something, to have to hold the boundary because people know outside of you. So what you're avoiding is, you know, you think that it's the judgment, but really it's the internal judgment of you knowing that it doesn't really align with how you know you should be treated. Yeah. And so you don't want to tell your closest friends and family what's really happening because then you're accountable to, it's a mirror of like, yes, that happened. And I am saying (laughs) that doesn't feel good. (laughs) And uh, that's why we avoid saying anything if you get in those types of relationships. Um, there's one other thing I do want to dispel about narcissists. Um, so a lot of times narcissists will, for the most part, be very defensive, you know, deny, 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 mm-hmm. uh, blame, blame, switch it on you, you know, get angry, explosive tempers, begging and pleading manipulation. But every now and then the stars and the moon align for them to have these really it feels very insightful moment Mm. where they can actually tell you that they're the person with the issues and say, it's not you, baby, it's me. And give you the sob story. You know, I struggle with this, you know what happened with me and I know that you deserve better. And you're right, I'm wrong. I shouldn't treat you like this and I'm gonna get better. And that's music to people's ears because people are like, oh, okay, they have insight. They grew. They showed me, yes, they showed me empathy for once. They showed me some tenderness. They took accountability one time in this moment. (laughs) And (laughs) now I need to be a good partner and give them a chance to change. (laughs) And that's how they keep you on the merry-go-round. Because that that little moment will keep happening. 
but it will never line up with consistent, deep, thoughtful work and change, which is hard. And to change when you have been in the wrong requires that your ego is constantly pushed down to admit that you're wrong and to do the hard work of improving yourself. You have to come to terms with who you are, what you've done and, and how you're showing up in life. And the only way that you can do that is through humility. And so narcissists obviously struggle with that. So they're going to have that little two second moment, you know, pat their eyes mm-hmm. and, and shed you a tear, you know, but mm-hmm. check back two weeks from now. <laughs> yes. Cause trust, they, they know how to cry like nobody's business if they need to, it will be waterfalls. If they need to pull that out, it will be this yes. like, enlightenment if they need to pull that out. And we do, we get disillusioned and we're like hopeful and excited. Cause once again, we want to go back to those first three months. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to me. <laughs> uh, like, I'm so happy that we put that disclaimer out there. Cause I know that oftentimes happens. Um, but talk to me a little bit about the person who's with a narcissist. Cause I want them to be held accountable mm-hmm. too. Yeah. I'm sure we're guilty of being attracted to these type of men and women, mm-hmm. but what is it about us that makes us want to be with a narcissist? Could we address some so, of that? Yeah. So I think that it, it's a lack of really learning to what self-love feels like. When you really love yourself, you cannot abide the unhealthiness of yeah. how someone loves you through narcissism. It no longer aligns. If somebody tells me something mean, I am like, oh, oh no, you're not about to be in my circle because I don't treat myself <laughs> that way. I uplift my friends. I love my friends. I am team champion somebody. So if you tell me something sideways, oil and water don't mix, you know? So it's like, it's just a no. But when you have some toxicity still inside of you in terms mm-hmm. of like, maybe you beat yourself up. Maybe yep. you call yourself stupid. Maybe you say that you're not worth anything. Maybe you you have childhood wounds that you haven't addressed, yeah. abandonment issues. You know, you're wanting somebody to pick you. You're yep. wanting somebody to to uh, make you feel a certain way. You need so to feel then accepted. when they talk to you a little, you need to feel accepted. So then when they talk to you a little bit, you know, a little crazy, you're like, oh, this is familiar with me. Mm-hmm. This is familiar to me. So I'm going to stick around with that. You know, I tell people it's like, if your whole life you've learned that love and abuse coexist and Mm. they mix and that's that was what you were served Mm -hmm. as a child as a teenager in your developmental stage when you go out and you find somebody who mixes love and abuse you will think that that tastes right yep it's gonna be delicious you're like oh this is gonna be delicious this is the perfect recipe recipe tastes good to me (laughs) (laughs) and then all the women who really have done the work right and who are like what is this? Mm-hmm. I know, like it's that not part. For me. It's this too, this too a little too salty. It's a little too yeah. spicy. A little too much curry. And <laughs> like yes, exactly. garlic. <laughs> you can taste it. Exactly. That is such a great point, though. I love that because oftentimes we will, you know, overlook or we will um, compromise a lot of things that when we don't have, you know, our deal breakers or our boundaries set up, and we want to be in a relationship so bad, and I just. I posted this um, today that sometimes you, it's not even about the person that you're in a relationship with. They are not that incredible and that amazing. Oftentimes you just want the companionship. You just want to be in a relationship that you will take this person, however you can get them so that you can have that partnership so that you can have those, you know, events or so that you can have those memories or so that you can have that experience of a relationship versus, you know, stepping outside and finding someone who you are more compatible with or who's more equally yoked with you and in alignment with the type of love that you deserve. But then that requires you loving yourself, like you said, on a higher level. And a lot of times yeah. we don't want to do that. We, we It's just easier mm-hmm. to say in the relationship. Right. And it's, it's like, you know, I try to get people to see that it's, it's, it's not that you're choosing comfort. You're not comfortable. It's actually pain. It's just <laughs> pain you're familiar with. You know what I mean? It's just pain that you're familiar with. But upgrade, upgrade and find something better. There's always more love. There's always healthier options available to you, you know? Don't be afraid to, to go to the next level. Mm-hmm. Guess what? If you don't like the next level, you, all, you well, look, all the stuff that's at the bottom is always there. You know, <laughs> you always go back to that, but you might as well, you know, get out of that unhealthy relationship and 
find someone who's going to treat you the way that you deserve to be treated. But first you have to know how you deserve to be treated. That and part. that's where the work comes in. That part. This is why y'all need us. Cause we want to help you come <laughs> to this realization, right? It's for you to feel empowered. Um, Brie and I both have amazing programs that can help you through this. And this is, you know, our purpose in life. This is what we do. This is why her and I connected because we are on the same vibration when it comes to, you know, challenging yourself to love yourself the way that you deserve, but we understand it doesn't just come naturally. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to, you know, implant some seeds that like you can water and grow. And when you are ready, we are here for you. But Brie, can you tell the people who are in maybe a relationship right now that with a narcissist, or maybe they are the narcissist, but like, if they are in a relationship with one, Mm -hmm. um, what are just a few things that they can start doing to pull out of that situation? Like, cause it's easy to say, walk away, right? You and I both know, get the hell out. Yeah. For them, right. What are some things that they can start doing to detach themselves from this extreme attachment? Yes. So find support, find a community, go to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I that part. And you're an amazing therapist. If I can recommend anyone, I'm going to say go to Brie. She is phenomenal. Um, I try to send you referrals, but you get booked up so much. Um. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's like, please go to therapy. You know why? Um, There's something so powerful about sharing with a person that doesn't know you Mm -hmm. and them telling you the relationship that you're in before you can tell them the relationship that you're in. It's it's just like this magical experience of like, oh my God, everyone thinks that their relationship is like a special case, an asterisk star, you know, but when it comes to a lot of this abuse, it really is textbook. Yeah. And so having those illuminating moments where somebody tells you what you've gone through and you have not told them, it's it's almost like a psychic, you know, yeah. like I feel like my clients love a psychic, you know, I give them all these insights and the psychic is like, water is wet. They're like, I'm shaking, <laughs> you know, what water is wet. <laughs> like, you know, the, 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 the truth is, it's like when you, when you read a person before they've had a moment to explain to you, like how this person is treating them. Something about that is almost like magic, yeah. and a a, a a a ding, a light goes off, and people are able to start to find the strength to come up out of it, as well as just like you've been gaslit for so long that you need to be validated, and yeah. you need to relearn to trust your intuition, to trust yourself, um, and so a therapist is really going to help you navigate that properly. Yeah, but you know, follow. You know, if you can't afford therapy there are great options for like group therapy for free therapy community college there's like all these options that you should explore but if you don't got nothing else get on pinterest and start (laughs) looking up narcissists and just read read your own relationship and get in a community (laughs) of women who are who are trying to leave um and and hold try to hold yourself accountable yeah because you deserve better Absolutely, freaking lutely Yes, I know we, we it's hard, y'all. We, I, trust me, this is not some like fly by night. We, we're, I'm not trying to push you out of a relationship. I am pro relationship and so is Brie, but we are pro healthy relationships. Yes. And so if yeah, we get it, you love them, but is your definition of love the same as their definition of love? And if it's mm-hmm. not, why are we still in this relationship? Yeah. Um, I want the world to be able to find you should they need. I know you're moving right now, but you got some banging programs that I absolutely co-sign. Um, talk to everyone a little bit about like where they can find your program and services. Yeah. at. So um, you can find me the easiest on my Instagram or my website. They are both at thegatheredlife.com or Instagram. I'm at thegatheredlife, all one word. Um, my program is called the diamond dating league. You can find that information on my website. You can also find it on my Instagram. We're in wait right now, but we have another launch coming up Yay. in late April. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hey. Um, so yeah, I'd love to help people transition out of these relationships. It's just too important. There's just too many beautiful souls to be Heck. trapped in something that is unhealthy. And mind your relationship, the, the, the partner that you choose is the most important decision you will make in life. Oh, yes. Um, yes. so, so we don't lend ourselves to enough work around relationships. So, you know, I, I just love that I have you a part of my community and a resource and that you are just, I love everything that you, you know, speak on the, the level of education that you have and just the spiritual gifts you, you even have are beautiful. And so I am blessed to like have you in my life, but I want to bless other people with you as well, girl. 
So that's why I got to bring you on the show and let people see your light and magic. Um, So yes, you guys, if you can check Brie out, um, you guys can always uh, go to thespicylife.com, click and subscribe, share this episode with a friend who you know may be in a relationship like this or, you know, experiencing this. Um, or maybe you just need to listen to it and listen to it three times. <laughs> you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Madi. Um, but make sure that you guys, like I said, share this episode and write a review too. I want to hear what you guys think about the episode and definitely in the comments, write questions and you can go to the info at the spicy life.com and send questions that you have as well. Um, and Brie and I are going to start doing some clubhouses together. So you guys can catch yeah. us on there as well. We need to start, start um, giving you guys some more relationship knowledge um, live so we can answer some of your questions. But there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.